two intro local election headquarters. Election day, can you believe it? Less than a week away. It's next Tuesday. And we've been sitting down with Mount Pleasant mayoral candidates this afternoon. We have Kathy Landing joining us now in studio. And Kathy, I certainly appreciate you spending the time with us today. First question I have for you. Let's talk about, in your opinion, what's right in Mount Pleasant right now and what's wrong and where we're going. Well, thank you so much, Brendan. I appreciate yeah. being here for all your viewers. Uh, what's right? There are so many things that Mount Pleasant has going for it. We have extremely low crime. We have the best schools in the area and really some of the best in the state. And we also have wonderful people and beautiful venues. So we want to preserve all the things that are going so well. The biggest problem we have by far is traffic congestion, mm -hmm. and it's a multi-pronged problem. We've worked hard as a council all together to slow down residential growth, which was really getting out of hand quite a few years ago. It's one of the reasons I ran for council, and we did things that we had to do at the time, like a permit allocation to slow the rate of growth and stop having such huge track home facilities mm -hmm. and so forth. Um, we also did other things like an apartment moratorium, but with workforce housing exceptions. Um, and actually earlier a senior housing. We now have pretty much plenty mm -hmm. of senior housing. What we still have to do is we need to do a couple major things. The first is we need to do a better job of bringing facilities and services and jobs close to where people live. Because when you have sprawl like we do, especially on the other end of town, the northern end of town, a lot of homes were built with nothing near them and they're bereft of a lot of the services people need. Mm -hmm. So you have to get in a car and drive all the way down to the heart of Mount Pleasant here in the Shem Creek area or you have to drive to Charleston. So that's one of the things I've been working hard on. We also need to make sure that our financial stability is great for the long term. We're AAA rated now, we're in a great position, but that's partly because of all the growth and impact fees of businesses coming in. We need to make sure we can replace that for the long term. We talk about growth, we talk about congestion. You hear it from people all the time, Mount Pleasant, mm -hmm. we're full. Mm -hmm. How do you sustain that quality of life here? Well, one of the things people have a little misconception on is that if you bring a business, that that somehow brings more traffic. Actually, if it's a business that's missing, for instance, um, north of the IOP connector, there's not a single restaurant for date night. If you mm -hmm. want to go out for an anniversary or birthday or special occasion, there's not a single place to go. So what do you do? There's 45,000 plus people living there. Of course, they go somewhere. So they get in a car and they go n south of the connector or even in many cases all the way down to Charleston. That longer car trip adds to traffic congestion. If you bring fine dining to that end of town and family dining, we need a lot of both, several of both, um, then you actually can shorten car trips, bring in business revenue, and also help raise quality of life. Kind of like what you said in your ad campaign, you want to be a mayor for all of Mount Pleasant. I wanted to kind of have you ask, explain what that means. Yes, excellent point. So um, I believe strongly that those of us who came here a long time ago, like my husband brought us here with the Navy in 1984, those who are natives, that's wonderful. But there's folks that just moved here a year or two ago, and they want to feel that this is their hometown. They chose Mount Pleasant. We want everyone to feel, and you can't just talk about that. You have to be purposeful. And a good example of that is what we just did recently where we had the first annual Mount Pleasant Police and Firefighters Ball. I was on here last week mm -hmm. with uh, Chief Mixon talking about that and it was a smashing success. And the great thing about it is people working together in the community enjoying things regardless of how long they've lived here. One other thing I want to mention on facilities, a great example, a senior center. We really want to have a senior center on the north side of town and the one that we have is wonderful. It's by the hospital, East Cooper Hospital, but it's oversubscribed. There's so many people and it's a long drive if you live in Tupelo or Charleston National. Mm -hmm. So those are another example of things that we need to bring that will really help make life better for everybody and also shorten car trips. Quickly, your campaign ads talk about property taxes, impact fees. We know they've gone up this past year. Under your leadership, would that continue to be that way? No, in fact, quite the opposite. I'm very geared towards, because I have a long history with financial planning and a fiscal conservative, I am very geared towards making sure that we bring the businesses and services that we need, and those actually pay business revenue taxes, and if they're buying property, they pay higher property taxes, which means the rest of us don't have to have an increase. So we can, we can save a lot of money for the town in the long run and for our residents by simply getting the services we need here. Kathy Landing, good luck. We're out of time, unfortunately, thank but thank you very much for joining us. Well, thank you, Brendan. All I right. appreciate your time. Yep. Uh, we are going to break right now. Remember, Election Day is next Tuesday. Stay with us. We'll be right back.